Um, all right. OK, everyone, let's uh, pray, and uh, we'll get started. And a very good morning to everyone. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace upon our lives this entire week. Lord, even as we sit here in the last day of uh, the classes for the week, oh God, we pray that you continue to speak to us, continue to fill our hearts with revelation that uh, we can live, Lord, lives of faith just the way people of God have lived lives of faith. We praise you, we worship and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the last class, we were looking at uh, the Old Testament, and we said that though we don't exactly um, read the word faith or believe very often, there are people who have believed. And we saw the whole list given in um, Hebrews 11. Some names are mentioned. Many names are not mentioned. As you go towards the end of Hebrews chapter 11, someone read it out. And we saw that it says, you know, so many people, they believed, they, um, they fought battles, they endured persecution, they went through tough times, they held on to God and his promises. So there are people whose names are given and whose names are not given. However, there, are, there have been many people who lived by faith in the Old Testament. So for us today, as we follow God, why are we even looking at the Old Testament? Well, it is an encouragement for us to believe God. Okay, It's an encouragement for us to also walk the way those people walked. And we uh, went through some of the names. right? We said Abraham, Sarah, Abel, Enoch. If we, yeah, Noah is also another person we've seen. But there are many other names. If we go by each of the names one by one, I think we will not be able to complete our session. So uh, I won't go through all of them. All right. We will study about this in detail when we do the book of Hebrews. So those of, those of you who will continue into the third year, we will go in detail when we study the book of Hebrews. Uh, you know, we do a verse by verse study. So uh, we leave it for that time. But as of now, what is it that we can get as a uh, summary or highlights from the entire chapter okay, about people of God who have believed in God. The first thing we said last week was that they had a good testimony before God. So what is a good testimony? Basically, it means that it is pleasing God. When God thinks of us, when God considers us, if we are people of faith, he is happy with us. That's what it means. So we the names that we shared, you know, Abraham, Sarah, and their walk of faith, that was pleasing to God. That's why they have been included in Hebrews chapter 11. So in the same way, you and I are making a faith journey. And we said that we should have a good testimony before God. And remember, uh, we clarified that reputation is what people think of us. But reputation is not who we are. We could have a completely different uh, lifestyle and choices and behavior when people are not watching. Okay, But that is the real person that you and I are. That person who we are in the secret is what God is looking at. And that person should have a good testimony before God. It's not about having a good testimony only before people. Is it important to have a good testimony with people? It is. We can't say that it doesn't matter what people think about me. It's okay. You can't because when we study later on, if you uh, read how Paul encourages Timothy, because Timothy is going to be the leader of the church of Ephesus and he tells Timothy, look, your testimony is very important. The way you behave in front of people is very important, right? So testimony in front of people is also important, which is why we are sensitive that we should not uh, offend people or we should not confuse people with our standards. But at the same time, what is more important is our testimony before God, what God thinks of us, because that is the real person that you and I are. And now when we look at these people from Hebrews chapter 11, they had a good testimony with God. 
I think that's like the best award that you can ever get. More than what people can clap for. When God says, I'm happy with your testimony. I'm happy with your life. I'm happy with your faith walk and your faith journey. So these people had a good testimony with God. What gave them that good testimony? Believing or faith. Faith. Remember, we said Abel, only one thing he did, which the Bible records. But he's in Hebrews 11. Amazing. Why? Because whatever he did, the little he did, he did it with faith. We can do a lot without any faith. It doesn't matter. But even if we do a little, but faith matters. God is observing, right? And God is watching. In fact, uh, it, it says, um, you know, in, in the writing to the Corinthians, I think, like when, when God comes and when the judgment happens and all, it, it's like, our work will be tested, isn't it? It'll be tested. Is it gold, silver? Is it straw? What does that mean? A part of that, I believe, is also faith. If we have lived by faith, if we have served with faith, then our works will not be burnt up. But if what we are doing is lacking faith, then it's not, uh, it, it'll disappear when it is tested. So God wants us to have faith and walk with faith because he takes notice of it, the smallest amount of faith in our hearts. So it's an encouragement. As we look at people in the Bible, they had faith that pleased God. It gave them a good testimony. Today, for us to have a good testimony with God, we should have faith. Okay, whatever God has called us to do, have faith and walk with faith. Now, what else do we understand from this passage? We must live by faith in the promise of future things. So when we consider many of the scriptures here, Hebrews chapter 11 verses 10, 13 through 16, it says that the people, they waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So God gave a promise to Abraham and that promise was like Genesis 12, Genesis 15, as you study about how God spoke to him, encountered him, God said, I will give you this land. And it clearly explains the, the um, dimensions of the land. Okay. But the promise of God to Abraham was beyond that land. Physically, yes, God said, I will give you that land, but... Abraham had revelation of something beyond that land. There's going to be a city whose foundations okay, are uh, laid by God and the builder and maker is God. What is he talking about? You know, it, it's as if though God gave a promise for the lifetime, Abraham was believing God for eternity. In eternity, we all know now, based on what the scripture has revealed to us, that we've recently done the end times. And uh, right after the second coming of Christ, there will be the millennial rule of Christ, after which there will be the formation of the new heavens, the new earth. Who will rule and reign 100% in, in that season without Satan's interference? Jesus. Christ will rule. So a city whose builder and maker is God. So Abraham not only believed that he will get that, that physical land on the earth, which is great because he believed in the promise that God made for him. But how did he live his life? There was an expectation in the future. There is some expectation in the future. So with the promise of God comes the expectation in the future. What is faith? That's what faith is, right? Faith is about what is to come, things that are in the future. So this is how Abraham lived. Not only Abraham, when we read the scriptures there, it says Isaac, uh, Jacob. So they all were looking for something beyond, something ahead for the promises to be fulfilled. So that's how they lived their lives. So uh, they lived by faith in the promise of 
future things of future things so when we look at the people of the old testament they were people of faith when we read the writings of peter in first peter chapter 1 verses 10 to 12 he says that the prophets they prophesied about the coming things about christ there were many prophets if you read the messianic prophecies of isaiah uh, you know and and other other people like zechariah many people who prophesied about christ prophesied about times to come they knew that there are greater things ahead jesus is coming the redeemer will come uh, and you know um, there will be redemption from from sin many things they knew they prophesied they believed in it but they never saw it but they had faith in those things don't you think that's that's really great because now we are living on the other side jesus has come blessings are there we have the written word of god in our hands so it's a little bit easier in that sense for us but for those who lived at the time when jesus had not yet come they left behind prophecies word of god okay and they believed in those things they knew these things will come later but what was what was their testimony or what is it that we can learn from them they believed in those things even when they did not see it even when god just spoke and said this is all going to happen they believed it so that is why we are talking about them that is why we are talking about their faith it's uh, very inspiring to look at people like that now let's quickly read uh, one section from hebrews 11 uh, could someone read from verse 13 to 16 hebrews 11 13 to 16 these all dead in faith not having received the promises but have having seen them afar of were uh, assured of them mm. embarrassed them no battery okay uh, could you could someone else read all these people were still living by faith when they died they did not receive the things promised they only saw them and welcomed them from the distance admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth people who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own if they had been thinking for the of the country they had left they would have had opportunity to return instead they were longing for a better country a heavenly one therefore god is not ashamed to be called their god yes uh, for he has prepared a city for them all right so again this is talking about looking into the future and uh, the promises which are to come that's how they lived and we've already spoken about it but what is the pattern like how are they relating to the promise of god we'll look at that so we saw here from hebrews 11 and verse 13 it says these all died in faith not having received the promises but having seen them afar off were assured all right so assured of them think about this these people lived like for example uh, the promise about christ they lived their lives in their lifetime jesus did not come but how did they live they had faith that one day the messiah will come one day this will happen one day you know god will fulfill whatever he has spoken so when they were living it says notice this having seen them afar off so here is the lesson for you and me and god gives a promise we need a vision they saw 
saw what natural see no because faith is about the things yet to come so how can they see physically that's not what it is speaking about it's speaking about seeing in our spirit's mind or spirit's eyes perceiving with our spirit man when god has promised something they saw from afar many years ahead okay before the fulfillment of those things there is something called as vision it's not this vision like you go to the doctor and check it up how good is my vision right this is natural my sight but what is more important than eyesight natural eyesight is spiritual vision can we see there are things in the future promises in the future right victory is in the future accomplishments in the future you know mighty things that are going to take place in the future fulfillment of scriptures in the future many things are there but today i'm living it's day to day life you know we woke up we came today to bible college we have to finish this and we have prayer which is going about our daily lives but you know what we need we need a vision what is our expectation for the future yes we have to live in the present fully fully um, aware of the present today these things are happening wonderful but what is our vision for the future look at these people their faith was such that they saw things from afar you and i what can you see afar off if there is nothing if there is darkness if there is blurry picture pray and ask god and say god give me give me a vision oh god give me oh god uh, based on your promises i need to be able to look at the future you know maybe something like okay my family is doing better or uh, we are all serving the lord together um there is our church has grown bigger many people are blessed through the work and ministry that we are doing our team has expanded we are impacting the city we are impacting the nation it's all vision where is it it's insight spirit man you are able to see those things so how do these people relate to the promise of god god said something but out of what god said comes vision they saw those things before those things happened for example abraham god promised you will have isaac before isaac was born god said you will have descendants many descendants and the bible says that abraham would look at the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore and imagine you used to imagine god promised i will have so many descendants it's in his imagination he has a vision some day there will be so many people right who are my offspring vision he saw something they all saw something if we can't see anything based on the promises of god we really got to work on it and say god please help me to see things afar off okay so see things afar off what else can we see there was 13 it says they were assured of them this is the second point one is they saw abraham saw in the future okay many descendants many sons and daughters he is able to see right now no child okay but what is faith today he is believing for what is coming tomorrow okay so he is able to see second assured of them that means convinced convinced sure sure in our hearts okay no no shaking i know god will do i know god has promised i know this is god's word i know it's coming okay so we are thanking god we are praising god yes lord you're going to do it thank you you know you're pouring out your spirit uh, and my i will, we will see your uh, amazing works in our land uh, many people are coming to know you many churches are being filled we can see it and we are assured of it we are praying and god the holy spirit is giving us assurance that's what faith is right remember we said faith the substance of things hoped for 
within our heart there is an assurance so these people lived like that they had the assurance yeah god will do god will um, you know one day there will be a city of god and we will be in that city can you imagine people of the old testament talking about the prophetic end time you know words of god but that was their faith they saw things and they were convinced no doubting they were sure yeah all this is going to happen so they were living their lives but their eyes were on eternity or the promises of god so that's what we can learn from it isn't it so we are doing our everyday life but at the same time based on god's word based on god's promises we can see with our spirit eyes second we are convinced that surely god is going to do these things what is the third one it says embraced them embraced them embraced them means uh, you kind of you receive it with your whole heart like the father embraced the son can you receive with your whole heart yes god this is your plan for me this is your plan for my church this is your plan for my city i receive it i completely you know give my life to this this is what you're going to do in my life embrace it they embrace it that's the third one fourth is they confessed they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth so the reality by faith it came to a place in their faith walk with the lord that they were quite clear by the end of it and they were even talking about it they were saying you know what we are here but this is not it this is not all god is going to do something great in the days to come we will receive the promises that he has given us so they are actually talking about it they are confessing it so four things if we have faith and we are making a journey like the old testament people what are the four things we will do we will see things we will see the promises of god second is be assured of the promises of god third is embrace the promises of god fourth is confess the promises of god so that is what we are learning from the believers or or uh, the people of the old testament this is how they lived they lived in the present but their eyes was in the future their eyes was on eternity to be more specific so are we also living like that or are we only living based on our worldly life you know i need this i need that uh you know this is what my home needs that's it we don't have a deeper vision than that we don't have a father vision than that like what does god want me to do our purpose is all me myself <coughs> you know god give me this give me that that's all but that's not how these people lived they had a vision beyond themselves based on the promise of god okay any thoughts questions yes ma'am yes uh, ma'am suppose uh, there are certain things that god showed a person that a prophecy over like a mm. prophecy happened over some person that you will become a doctor yeah suppose right so that person started uh, like looking himself like that mm. that okay i have to join the college medical college yes, and i have yes. to work and then i have to study mm. about mbbs and all yeah and he became a doctor but it doesn't it means that that person god showed him okay but that person went to by wo oh, medical college okay if that person like can do this thing on by his own right so i want to know that um, how that prophecy worked because that person only did he mm. went to uh, that mb medical college he did mbbs mm -hmm. and he became a doctor yeah. then how it happened by like like a prophecy hmm. because someone said that okay you will become a doctor and he went yes How? sure because sure. if someone will say that you will be become a businessman and i started like learning about business strategies and all so that is my thing because i studied about those things and hmm. then i became 
then how God will work on those things? Yeah. So, uh, see, there is one scripture, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. It says, we are co-workers with God. We are co-workers with God. That means God is at work, but how does he work? He works with us. He works through us. He works through people to fulfill his purposes. Let's go back to Abraham. God had a plan. God had a purpose. He wanted a nation of his own. He wanted a people group of his own. He can create them, right? Anytime he can create it, he can make the boundaries of the land and say, hey, this is my land. These are my people. I am blessing these people. Done. But how did he work? He picked a man. Abraham. And Abraham made a faith journey. He had to believe God for the promises. Okay. In that sense, he worked to see what God wanted him to accomplish. And then finally, there are descendants, there is a land, all that. Point is, when God works, he does not work independently of people. That's how it is in general. If God wants to do something, we will notice that he's picking a man. When he wanted a deliverer and a leader, Moses. Okay, Moses, you lead the people. Again, you know, David, come, David, you serve me. You, you be the pattern for these people to follow. People. God is choosing people. Paul, come, serve. I'm giving you a calling, assignment. So you get the point. People are very much involved in the purposes of God. And as we said, co-workers, God will reveal his plans, but we have to cooperate. So if I don't, like as you said, right, um, can God not, if it is a prophecy, why can't it just happen? Like that person becomes a doctor. It won't because this is also there when you study prophecy, all personal prophecy is conditional, meaning there are conditions that apply. That is in God's heart for me, like just take for example, God wants me to be a preacher. That is in God's heart for me. Now, if I don't cooperate, I'm doing my own thing. I don't care about, you know, studying the word. I just do whatever I want to. Even if God wants, I will never become a preacher. Go working with God. God will reveal his plan. God will reveal his purpose. But it takes for man to work it out. To get where God wants that person to be. So does that mean that God will only show us the vision? But the walking on that, the, the walking towards on that vision is our job. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, he's not going to um, forcefully make but it happen. Does that mean that he's going to open doors according to that vision? Yes, yes. Like if I'm, I want, like suppose doctor thing only. Mm. I want to become a doctor. I, I applied on, like I gave neat exam. Mm. Okay. And uh, so... I gave the neat exam. Does that mean that God will open doors for that college to, so that I can go into that college, good college? Yes. So God will work like that in my life? Yeah. So if that is God's purpose, the doors will start opening. Okay. There are, there are other things we will learn later on. See, when something is God's purpose, connected to that, there is grace, there's gifting. There are many things. So based on what God calls us to do, we'll see that there is the ability, there is that favor, there is um, whatever we need, God will make that happen. But we have to cooperate. See, think about Saul. Even Saul, God chose, right? As a king before David, but he didn't cooperate. Was it God's plan and purpose that he should be the king? He should rule for many years. Of course, it was in God's heart. But man has to co-work with God. Saul decided he can't, he won't, he was disobedient. And the Bible clearly says God felt very sad. God felt very sad that, you know, he had um, chosen such a person. 
and then he had to let go of Saul and pick another person who is willing, David, a man after God's own heart. Why is he a man after God's own heart? Because he did the will of God. So when we do the will of God, we will fulfill. If we don't do the will of God, we will not fulfill. That also is happening. So the answer is like you have to co-work with him. You have to. There is no other way. No other way. There's no other way. Okay. Fine. So all personal prophecy is conditional. Let's remember that. God will reveal. But if we don't participate, it may never happen. Sometimes sovereignly God may make it happen, you know, one, here and there. But in general, we have to cooperate. Okay, great. Let's move on. So we said that these people, they lived in the present, but their hearts were connected to eternity. And uh, they that's why they had a good testimony, right? That they believed God. Uh, even though they did not see the promise fulfilled. Obviously, they did not see the new uh, city established by God, but their, the hearts were convinced. And they were even convinced to the extent that they were confessing it. So that is their good testimony. And uh, uh, finally, what do we learn from these people? These people... They inherited the land of promise. So they received the promised land finally. So God gave Abraham a promise. And did it happen? It did happen. right? The land of Canaan, they came. And then, um, you know, then again, the, God wanted people of faith. So there was a Joshua and a Caleb. So the land is there. They went, 12 spies were sent out. And Joshua and Caleb come back. They give a good report. They say, yeah, we can take this. We can take this land. And uh, God continued to work through people of faith. Those who said that they can't, God did not even allow them to enter the land. It was only people of faith like Joshua and Caleb and the younger generation that God said, okay, you go in. Why? Because their hearts were open to what God wanted to do. And then we know, you know, Joshua, he went in. And there were giants in the land. It took faith for Joshua to defeat the giants. Even when you come into the promised land, can you imagine? There are giants. We thought, oh, cool, we've arrived, right? We've arrived, now we're going to relax. We are in the promised land, reached. You know, the flight has landed, happy. We are so happy. But you land there and there are giants. What to do? Sometimes again, we have to Fight, fight the giants, overcome the giants, possess the land. There are assignments for you and I. God has called us to assignments. Okay, that is why we need faith. Even in the promised land, Joshua had faith. Facing the giants, bringing down the giants, moving ahead, occupying, you know, piece by piece. He's occupying the land of Canaan. So that's how their journey was. But these people... They didn't give up. So generation after generation, they kind of, they kept the faith alive. And whatever God promised Abraham, it was finally fulfilled in the subsequent generation. So how do we receive the promises from God? By faith. So they kept the faith. No wonder they received the promises. They kept the faith generation to generation. So that's also another lesson. We have to teach our coming generation, how to believe God, how to trust God. You know, faith is something that has to be, um, that has to be taught. Faith, the fear of the Lord. And that's when you'll have the next generation also believe in God. And together, we will all fulfill what God wants us to do. And that's the example of these people in the Old Testament. They finally entered and uh, uh, they occupied the land. But remember we said some people didn't enter. Those hard-hearted people whom God kept away. And the book of Hebrews, it says he Hebrews 3, 19, Hebrews 4, 6. It's there in our notes as well. So Hebrews 3, 19 says, For so we 
see that they could not enter in because of unbelief some did not enter what was the issue unbelief faith it's like gate pass if you have faith come in if you don't have faith if there is unbelief you cannot come in so even when there is unbelief we will not walk into the promises of god look at hebrews 4:6 it says they did not enter because of disobedience two things will keep us from receiving the promises of god they are unbelief and disobedience just exactly what i was sharing earlier from the prophetic words of god are conditional even for israel they were conditional disobedience unbelief they didn't enter did god say they will enter yeah god said that's the plan that's the purpose of god but they did not cooperate so there was a generation that could not enter the promised land Okay, now in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews eleven, as you read it, it also says towards the end that there were people who believed God, but they did not receive the promises in their lifetime. Like as we said, the land. Did Abraham receive the full land? No. Did Isaac receive it? No. Did Jacob receive it? No. Right. It was the later generations that received it, and then it will talk about those who struggled for their faith. people who were persecuted for their faith so it seemed like oh why are these people struggling when god has blessed them when god has promised to them why are these people struggling but they are in hebrews 11 because god appreciates their faith even when we are struggling you got it yeah they did not escape the enemies some of them they were even killed hebrews 11 says they were killed but god appreciates their faith so what does that tell us you see ultimately god is looking at our faith we may be going through some struggles we may be going through some difficulties fulfillment of promise not yet but if we are in the status of faith then god appreciates it god remembers it think about that he has not only put those who have cleared Oh, they received the promise. Fine, put their names in Hebrews eleven. There were some who were struggling, some who were killed, some who went through all kinds of experiences, but they had faith. Put them in Hebrews eleven. They are in Hebrews eleven. Okay, it's amazing. It's amazing. So God sees faith. God appreciates faith, even if it is for. a small thing even if it is for just one thing as we saw in the life of abel so we need faith keep our faith alive right um yes so there's a mention of uh, different people uh, david there's a short note on david in our lesson so david he was a shepherd and he ended up killing a warrior so in verse 32 it says and what more shall i say for the time would fail me to tell of gideon and barak and samson and jephtha also of david and samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms worked righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouth of lions quenched the violence of fire escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness were made strong became valiant in battle turned to flight the armies of the aliens so how did gideon barak samson jephtha david samuel and the prophets accomplish what they did through faith through faith now we may ask the question how come god has put like samson and all why did he why didn't he leave them out because it's specifically talking about their act of faith there were moments in his life where he had faith and that's how he had the victory over uh, his enemies so god is recounting 
those specific incidents we could say not so much the entire life of the person right here uh, but the specific incidents so that's why these names are included now david what can we say about david from what we read just now we can say that he became strong out of his weakness and became valiant in battle he became valiant in battle so when we go back to the life of david he was not so called trained warrior what was he he was a shepherd boy and uh, the first incident that happened where he overcame the giant was when he took lunch for his brothers who were in the army and suddenly he heard about uh, goliath and he was ready to take on goliath he defeated goliath how did he defeat goliath by faith what do you need to defeat a giant in your life or what do i need to defeat a giant we need faith he is not even trained at that point so to speak he does not have the armor nothing slingshot armies are with armor training weapons they are not able to bring down the giant david shepherd boy slingshot giant is down why what was the element missing element faith he had faith in god that if i through my god i can do this i can do this and the giant came you know falling down a little bit more about david he was a man of faith right he was literally a man of faith he was confident when he says who is this uncircumcised philistine who comes against the armies of the lord why is he saying uns uncircumcised philistine because he had an understanding of the covenant that he had with god he was circumcised that means he had a covenant with yahweh god that's the revelation and he knows what it means to be a man of god to be somebody who has a covenant with god almighty that's why he got upset he got very angry he said how dare how dare this uncircumcised philistine meaning you may be big and tall but you are not a man of covenant why should i be afraid of you he had revelation of the covenant the giant does not have any covenant but i have a covenant so i'm going to defeat this giant okay what does that show faith faith he believed who he was today we know who we are in christ how much do we believe it we have we don't have any goliath giants in our lives what kind of giants we have we have fear we have uh, uh, you know uh, intimidation stress pressure anxiety confusion so many other giants we have emotional giants okay same thing applies today for us when these giants come up against us where is our faith david had faith and he brought down the giant because he knew this is who i am in christ today we speak to our giants fear i am blessed in christ jesus i am confident in christ jesus who are you i rebuke you leave spirit of fear in the name of jesus that's how we can take on our giants that's what we learn from david a man of faith in the covenant of god and at that time historians say his age would have only been like maybe 17 so teenager can you imagine one teenager goes and with a slingshot kills a giant it was possible because of faith what else can we observe in the life of david he built on his past history with god that means you know in the past he he killed the lion and the bear so same way for us also in our lives don't forget the experiences that we have had with god how god helped us how god provided for us how god did miracles in our lives we don't forget it if god did it once he'll do it again i have faith god will do it again in my life david was like that he never forgot god helped me when i faced the lion god helped me when i faced the bear god will help me when i'm facing goliath 
so he remembered his history with god we should never forget our history with god and david was a man of boldness where does boldness come from boldness comes from faith because he knew i'm not alone god is with me if god is with me if god be for us who can be against us so boldness came from a place of faith for us today where are, where are we going to get our boldness faith in god will give us boldness and david spoke in advance of the outcome he was expecting so he directly said who are you uncircumcised philistine you know uh, i'm going to defeat you so what is he saying remember we said when they believed they confessed he already confessed he said i am victorious you know the way we say in our declaration every sunday i'm triumphant i'm a minister of god he's already saying it so we must also declare what we believe always declare what the word of god says about us and give glory to god always give the lord glory as he does mighty things in our lives so with this i'm going to stop because we are almost out of time um there is okay santosh is asking can we apply faith on natural elements yes we can um the way jesus walked on water the way jesus multiplied bread natural elements he calmed the storm it's possible and coming to shubham the bible says that they believed but did not receive the things promised what does it mean yeah what i what i stated you know sometimes the things that god speaks may not happen in our lifetime but as long as we are living in faith working towards it he still counts it as a life of faith so that's what it means okay i hope that uh, answers your question shubham okay great thank you any other any other things that you want to discuss your question papers will be up this weekend so i know i told this week it's almost or ending the week but it will be up and uh, uh, you will have a little bit of time i generally give about 2 weeks make sure that you do it individually your uh, answer all your questions individually yes that i can't tell you yeah so usually um for the on campus online i give a combination so it'll be a combination of mcqs and essays yes yeah so for e learners it's different and e learners will find out fine so if there are no further questions let's stop here uh, could one of one of you lead in prayer today Thank you Lord for this wonderful day for this wonderful time Lord and this wonderful time of study Lord Lord I want to pray that thank you for uh, showing us that what our faith can do for your purpose Lord Lord I pray that uh, build our faith uh, Lord and we ask that because we have faith in you make us bold Lord so we can work according to your purpose and in Jesus name I say amen 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 Thank you. Thank you everyone. God bless you.